Hi everyone, Claudia over here and today I'm going to give you my review on the new CW show Riverdale. So I'm going to give you my review from episodes 1 through 5. I'm fully caught up and uh, in case you didn't know, I absolutely love Archie's. I've been a huge Archie comic fan ever since I can remember. So when this show was announced, I was super excited about it, knowing quite well that it was going to be a different rendition altogether of the Riverdale crew but you know when you are a fan or a huge fan of something it still intrigues you and you're still interested to know how um, it's going to be produced in the hands of a completely different uh, jet of system ultimately so I was quite intrigued to know how are they gonna bring along Archie, Betty, Veronica, Reggie, Dilton, and all the rest of the crew, Jughead, to television format. And, you know, I, I'm such a huge fan, and Archie's have been around for so long, along with his, you know, sidekicks, and Kevin Keller's brand new to the Archie comic genre. Uh, well, not brand new. He's been around for a couple years now. Um, and it... it I watched the movie, so all together I was very, very intrigued and excited and I highly, really was anticipating this TV show and I'm so glad that it finally came out and I'm going to give you my review of uh, episodes 1, again, through episodes 5. And also, if you haven't seen uh, the TV show, I highly recommend it first of all. Second of all, I just want you to know that I am going to be giving you some spoilers, not on purpose, but as I'm giving you this review, I'm going to be talking about spoilers, negatives, positives, so if you don't want to be spoiled, I suggest that you kind of step away until you watch up to episode 5, season 1, and then come back and then you can comment below and let me know what you thought and join the conversation as well. Uh, the CW sh is known for its dramatics and being really good with teenage drama and all that stuff. And it never fails at that. And I thought that, you know, whatever they take, um, whether it's DC TV, you know, Arrow, Supergirl now, The Flash, Legends of Tomorrow. I mean, all of those are a little dramatic in the sense that it's on the CW and we expect that, right? So... Coming into Riverdale and the production of it, I knew, also because I read up a, on a lot about it, but I knew that they were essentially going to take the Archie comics and switch it up and make it a lot darker and a lot heavier than the lighthearted, ridiculous comics with the silly jokes and the overly positive characters and the even the optimistic negative characters like Reggie like they were going to change into something different and mysterious almost like the Archie's weird mysteries feel to it or Archie's science ones to it and Riverdale really delivers that to me and I thought that they really picked well first of all the actors I love every single choice and they grow on me at every single episode. I think Betty looks so perfect and she's so well um, manicured and they picked the perfect actors to portray her as well as uh, KJ Appa who plays Archie. The only thing that really kind of upsets me about it was I was reading that he wasn't an Archie fan when he auditioned for the role. Like he didn't really know who the guy was and I was like... I just kind of wish you picked an actor who knew, but he does a phenomenal job as Archie, and I think that he does kind of look like Archie, although I would love to see a little more freckles, but then again, it's real life, and it's not comical for a TV show. Real life, I should say. Not really. But Jughead, on the other hand, um, they, they did a fine job picking Cole Sprouse, who also played Ben in Friends, so he has a long history of acting. And then we got uh, uh, a Hispanic girl, I believe, who plays Veronica, which is a nice little twist. Reggie's Asian. Wonderful. And then they even bring the newbie Kevin Keller in the mix. And then they bring all the, the parents and the older people who look a lot different than they should or that I'm used to. But 
I like every single twist of this, except for the Miss Grundy thing. The Miss Grundy thing, I wasn't okay with. The fact that Miss Grundy was really young rather than old and having some kind of unspoken relationship with Mr. Weatherby. She has a relationship with Archie. So my prediction for that is I'm going to bank on that she is really not Miss Grundy. The real Miss Grundy was on that newspaper and the real Miss Grundy is somewhere else because that was just weird. Her name, well obviously they did say that she's, her real name isn't Miss Grundy and it was like Jennifer, I forget. But I do hope that means that we're going to see the real Miss Grundy. But I just didn't like that. I didn't like that aspect of it. And it was so weird. But anyway, so I thought they did a good job with all the character choices. Um, so I'm going to kind of go, go down based on this list that I have that Betty is a lot crazier in this show, but she's just as sweet too. But she, um, you, you know, like, she's also the most intelligent one, which is normal, and the one that most people get along with. And by the way, KJ Appa did say that uh, he ships Betty and Archie to get together the most. And I thought Betty is, you know, she she's very close to the comic character, minus her inklings of psychoticness. I mean, granted, her parents are a lot crazier on this TV show than in the comics. And I shouldn't compare, but that's where my brain tends to go. I love that they put Polly as a mysterious sister because that's really how you feel as a comic book reader because Polly only shows up here and there and they get so excited when she comes back. But as a reader, you're always like, where, where, I totally forgot Polly existed, you know? So she's a mystery and they do that for the Riverdale show. I thought that was really cool. Veronica, however, is a lot nicer, and uh, I'm waiting for that vixen Veronica to come out, um, and maybe that's because Mr. Lodge isn't around, and Mr. Lodge is a really important part of the comic book, so it's kind of strange not saving him around, but I think he'll come around at some point. I, I hope so, and I hope that he's exponentially older, because um, that would be cool, because he's supposed to be old. Well, also, Mrs. Lodge is supposed to be older and not young and hot so that's kind of strange but hey Riverdale um Jughead doesn't have a home he's homeless he doesn't have parents and that's a little weird for me um that he is a son of the leader of the serpents um but Jughead as a character not his situation really works for me because in the show he is kind of asexual, but he also is nosy, no pun intended. He also likes burgers. I love that they did that. And uh, they also go to the chocolate shop all the time, which I love. I still want to see Pop Tate, though. Um, I think they did a really splendid job with Jughead and Betty's character. I think those two are the closest I've seen um, to the comic book. Um, so then we have Archie, and he is a really, he looks the part. I was pretty convinced as soon as I was 10 minutes into the TV show, but ironically, he's kind of the weakest character of the show, and it makes sense because I keep forgetting it's not an Archie comic, it's not an Archie show, it's called Riverdale. So in this case, even though a comic book fanatic of the Archie comics would expect Archie to be the main character, he is not the main character in Riverdale because he's just a storyline. So he's one of the weaker characters, in my opinion. Sure that he's kind of... I believe is going to set up the love triangle between Reggie and um, Veronica and Betty because, I mean, that is the staple and they probably have got to do it. I would be surprised if they didn't. And I do hope that they end up kind of making one of them end up together because that's an Archie comic dream that we've always had that no one's ever got the answer to, which I think is good because there's some people who want Betty and Archie, some people that want Archie and Veronica. But anyway, going back to Riverdale... Um, he's confused because he loves music, which makes sense because in the comic book, he is also a band leader 
along with uh, Betty and Ar uh, Betty and Veronica and Jughead and Reggie, where they play Sugar Sugar, the Archies, and all that stuff. Um, but he prefers music so much more than football, and it makes sense, but it also is, it just feels choppy, and then he's used to be dumb and in love with Miss Grundy, and that really bothered me because Archie's not like that, I think. I guess there's a naivete to him, but he is not the strongest character so far. I feel like he's been fooled quite a couple times. He gets chased around by a lot of girls, which makes a lot of sense because that's really his character. And um, they do play. He 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 he's perfect for the in the in the excuse me. He's perfect in Riverdale, but he his character needs to strengthen. Like his story itself, I I I want to see it um, grow. Also, we've got. Um, uh, Reggie. So Reggie's Asian, and I think that's awesome. I definitely want to see more of him. He is the bully, and he is Reggie, you know? I think, like, you know, he picks on people, and he's a jerk, and people are like, God, Reggie's such an asshole, and all stuff. But then you see tinges of him being nice when it comes down to, like, for example, when he was concerned about Archie's arm, because Archie was, um, got hit and did the wrong plays during football in episode five. So, that is Reggie. So, I mean, ultimately, all of them have their essential personalities and characteristics. It's just a little different, except for Veronica. I still think Veronica's a little too clean and sweet. Um, she should be a little bit more of an asshole. But you do see tinges of that when she interacts, when she has to defend herself. Like, for example, with Cheryl Blossom. And let's talk about Cheryl Blossom. Cheryl Blossom is a character in the Archie comics who only shows up here and there to kind of entice Archie and uh, make Betty and Veronica jealous. And that's a lot of times Betty and Veronica are constantly fighting for Archie's um, heart. But then when Cheryl come along, Betty and Veronica tend to unite to get Archie back because Archie has, uh, I mean, Cheryl's supposed to be like ridiculously hot, like ridiculously gorgeous, like off the chain. And yeah, she does have a brother, um, but He's not supposed to... I don't think there are twins. Um, so that's that's interesting there. But Cheryl in this show surprised me because they've kind of made her a very important protagonist with antagonistic qualities. But I think it really works for her. And it's kind of sad that we don't get to know Jason really well because he's already gone. But that's what makes the mystery of it. And that's what makes Riverdale Riverdale. And now we're going deep into what's all this intertwining of notably all these kids and their parents lying to them perhaps they have their parents have a shady connection shady past what's going on with polly what's going on with jason i think that's just really fun and good teenage drama writing for the cw um and we talked about miss grundy um i think she's a liar i think she's even a liar when she talks about her abuse and she had to run away from her husband and that really bothers me because that kind of stuff is something you should never joke about well it's a tv show and i know it's a tv show but it's like ugh, it makes me hate you even more miss grundy don't be joking like that um but it really succeeds in making riverdale its own world in adding at the same time components of the comics that cause to keep me connected to the comic book as well as the tv show and I, I love this show. I'm telling you, I cannot wait for the next episode. Episode after episode, I'm just so excited about it. I'm like, man, I'm way too old to love this show. But gosh, I love this show. It's so good. And so overall, those are my overall thoughts. Uh, predictions is I hope Betty and Archie uh, get together. But if they ever get together, I think it would be towards the end of the show's series run, not season run, but series run. I think Archie and Betty, excuse me, Archie and Veronica are going to hook up pretty soon. I think Cheryl and Veronica might end up hating Betty, and I think Betty is going to go nuts because people often mistake her for Polly, um, and her parents shelter her, and... Oh, by the way, the parents, you know, like, they're played by well-known actors and it's a trip to see Luke Perry, Machen Amick, and the guy who plays Betty Cooper's dad. And they, they really are good at putting all these characters 
that we know in the comic. Chuck Clayton, Cl Coach Clayton, Do uh, Mr. Weatherby, Dalton Doyle, Ethel Muggs. So I'm curious to see how the rest of the season plays out. I'm curious to see who killed Jason. And uh, my prediction, as I start thinking more and more, is maybe Betty. And I really think that's crazy, but I feel like it could have been Betty. And I hopefully we see Polly. I'm curious to know who is going to play her. I, Unless I miss something, I don't think there's going to be a Polly this season unless there's a casting announcement made soon, but there hasn't been. So that's my review of Riverdale. I really love the show. I highly recommend it. And if you've seen it, please tell me what you thought about it. If you liked it, if you didn't like it, continue the conversation of Riverdale. And also don't forget to press that thumbs up button but on. <laughs> Don't forget to press that thumbs up button right down there. So hit subscribe. Thank you for tuning in. I'll catch you next time for some more Riverdale talk because it's coming. See ya.